Okay, we have our document marked up with HTML tags, and we're about ready to start making our web pages look better with CSS. However, before we do, we need to understand what CSS is all about. The three letters CSS stand for Cascading Style Sheets. There are two things about this that we want to take a closer look at. First, we need to understand why the word sheets. Are there more than one? Then we need to understand the word cascading. First, let's take a step back and look at what one of our documents looks like as just plain raw text. What you see in the browser window now is just the text of the Declaration of Independence. I haven't wrapped any of the content in HTML element tags. This is why you don't see any separation between the paragraphs or much of any real styling. If we take a look at the developer tools by pressing F12, we can see that there is only one element that's giving us any real kind of style at all. All of this content is placed inside of the body element. At the bottom of the developer tools, in the styles tab, you can see that the body element is being displayed as a block with a margin of eight pixels. If I click on the black arrow beside the word margin, you can see that the setting is being applied to the left, right, top, and bottom margins. If you hover your mouse over where it says margin in the rectangular box below, it will highlight the areas where these settings are being applied. Now, if I go back into the HTML file, I can create an inline CSS style that will change the browser's default settings for the left margin. Inside the opening body element, I just press the spacebar after the word body and type style equals quotation marks margin left colon 100 pixels px semicolon and then control s to save the developer tools area shows how the browser recognizes the change that i've made to that left margin i click on the black arrow beside margin and you can see that the browser marks out its own setting for the left margin. And then above it, you see where it recognizes the CSS style rule that I created. Just to the right of the body element styles and just above that rectangular box, you can see where it says user agent style sheet. This is the first of the style sheets that you will have to deal with as a web developer. Every browser has built-in styles like this, and there are different browsers being used by people who may visit your website. In Wikipedia, you can find a comparison chart that shows information about more than 60 different browsers. Theoretically, you want your code to run well and display properly in all of those different browsers. In reality, though, about 15 different browsers make up more than about 95% of all the browsers that visitors to your website may use. Another problem, however, is that most of these browsers have different versions, and computer users often do not update to the latest versions. So I go to a website called Can I Use? And I can see here that it lists 90 different versions of Chrome, 24 versions of Safari, and 92 versions of Firefox. All web developers face the challenge of deciding which browsers to design for and which default browser styles need to be changed. You could use a web service like BrowserStack to test your work in different browsers different versions of browsers 
and different operating systems. However, this is not something you can do without buying a subscription and it takes a lot of time. It is when you try to change these settings that you run into the second part of understanding cascading style sheets. When you create your own styles using CSS, you can have conflicts with other style rules, such as those found in the default browser settings. Over the next few videos, I'll help you to learn ways to avoid these conflicts, and I'll show you how to use the tools of web developers to help you become professional and efficient.